How to add Git credentials in Jenkins. If you are working with Git repositories that require authentication, that means you're going to have to set up credentials within Jenkins. But which type of credentials do you need to set up? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller. It's version 2.303.3. And attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. And for the example today, I am using a private repository on GitHub. You may or may not be using GitHub, but the process that we're following today is very similar on both Bitbucket and GitLab. So first off, let's go ahead and create a job pointed at our private repository. And we go to the private repository, and first off, I'm going to select HTTPS. And we're going to use the HTTPS version in the first part of the video, and then we're going to be doing SSH in the second part. So copy HTTPS. Let's go back over to our controller, click on New Item, and we'll call this HTTPS Pipeline. Click OK. Let's change this from Pipeline Script to Pipeline Script from SCM, SCM to Git. And now let's paste in our repository URL and tab. And when we tab, we get an error message saying support for password authentication was removed. This is a GitHub specific item. But bottom line is this very last line, authentication failed for HTTPS, GitHub, and the rest of my URL. And by the way, the URL for that repository is down in the description of this video. So what do we need to do? Well, we know we need to create a credential in order to authenticate with the GitHub repository. And again, if you're using GitLab or if you're using Bitbucket or some other type of Git repository, the process is going to be similar, but obviously the steps are going to be very specific to each of those providers. So in the case of GitHub, what we're going to do for HTTPS is we need to set up a personal access token. And the reason why we know that is support for password authentication was removed. So that's all gone. And they even tell me here, please use a personal access token instead. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back over to GitHub. We'll go up to my ID and go to settings. And in the case of a personal access token, we're going to click on developer settings and then personal access tokens. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new token. I'm going to give the note or the name in my case is going to be Jenkins example private PAT. It doesn't really matter what it is. Now I'm also going to go ahead and set an expiration date for 30 days. You can choose to have no expiration or a custom, but they give, also give you 7, 30, 60, and 90. So if you do set an expiration, and you need to refresh that token, you'll just need to remember to come back and do that at the time before it expires. Now, what are the different scopes that we need to select for this? Well, in order to access a private repository, we need to select the repo scope, which gives you the full control of private repositories. Now, this could be up to you. Maybe you go ahead and decide, I don't want all of these, but in my case, I'm just going to select the full repo. I'm also going to go ahead and select two other items. First one is user email. And the second one is going to be, I'm trying to remember what it is. Yes, it is read org. I'm just going to pick read org. Uh, there is a knowledge base article on the Cloudbe support site that has this information. I'll be sure to include that in the readme in the repository. So we have a read org, user email, and then the top level repo. Let's go ahead and click on Generate Token. And I'm going to copy my token. So I'm copy that there. And I am going to paste it off on the side because I'm going to need this again in a few moments. OK, so I have that set up. Let's go back over to our job. And just right here, we're going to add a credential. Jenkins. And for this, we are going to be using the username and password type credential. So in my case, my username is my personal email address. I'm going to treat the username as secret as well. I'm going to copy my token. And for the ID, I'm going to call it Jenkins example GitHub PAT and the same for the description. So what I have here 
is my username for whatever my platform is. In this case, it's my email address. And for specifically GitHub, in order to use the password, it's actually a personal access token, but it goes into the password field. Let's go ahead and click on Add. And let's select this credential that we just created, Jenkins Example GitHub PAT. And watch what happens. It re-authenticated and all of those messages went away. So now we know that we're authenticated with our repository. Let's go ahead and finish this up. We have a Jenkins file that's in that repository that's just a hello world. So let's go ahead and click on build now just to prove out that we're actually connecting to that repository. So we take a look at the run. We can see here that it's cloning the repository. So that tells me that my authentication is good. And we also see echo hello world. So everything worked as expected for HTTPS. So for the first job, we did HTTPS. In the second job, let's use SSH. So we'll go back over to our repository, click on code, click on SSH, and we're going to copy this URL. Let's go back over to our controller, new item. We'll call this one SSH, pipeline, click OK. Same thing here, pipeline script from SEM. Change it to git and paste in the SSH repository URL. And here we can see that we're also getting a permission denied for public key. We're unable to read from the remote repository. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. So what we need to do now is set up an SSH key pair to be able to authenticate from our Jenkins controller back into GitHub. So let's go back over to GitHub, go back to my profile. We're gonna to go to settings but instead of going to developer settings on the left nav, we're going to go to SSH and GPG keys. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new SSH key. But how do we do that? Well, fortunately, right down here, they give us the link to how to generate an SSH key. And if we take a look at this, generating a new SSH key and adding it to SSH agent, we don't really care about doing it to the agent at this point. We just want to generate the key. And what we have here is it gives us a copy and paste for SSH keygen T. And we're going to use this specific algorithm and we're going to give it the email address. So in my case, what we're going to do, I'm going to open up a shell and I'm on Mac OS. So what I'm going to run here is SSH keygen T ED 25519 and then dash C with my email address. And it says, enter file in which to save the key. I'm just going to let it go to the default there. I'm going to add no passphrase and leave the passphrase out. You could add a passphrase if you want. And we're all good. So now what do we need to do? Well, let's go back over to GitHub and we're going to add a new SSH key. And in this case, my title is going to be Jenkins example git SSH. And yeah, let's get that off the front. And then my key is going to be my public key. Well, if we go back over to the shell, here is my public key. So let's just cat that out. There's that. So let's go ahead and copy it. And let's paste that in to here. So we're adding our SSH key. And now we can see that our Jenkins example get SSH was added on this date. Never used read write. All of that's good. So now that we have created our SSH key over on GitHub, at least the public side, now what we need to do over on the Jenkins side is to create a new credential. And specifically, the type of credential that we need to create is SSH username with private key. So in my case here, my ID is going to be just what I named it over on the other side. That way I can keep track of, okay, which ones map from Jenkins over, in my case, to GitHub. My username is going to be, again, the ID that I put inside of my credential. I'm going to treat it like a secret as well. And then for my private key, I'm going to enter it directly. I'm going to click on Add. Now let me go and grab my private key, which now looks like this. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We'll head back over here and paste that in. 
And if I had added in a passphrase, I would go ahead and type in this passphrase. But since I didn't add a passphrase, nothing to add there. Let's click on Add. And then let's change our credential to get SSH. And again, much like what we saw with the HTTPS version, the authentication errors went away as we selected that credential because what happened under the hood is it was re-authenticating and testing that credential to make sure I'm able to actually authenticate against my Git repository. We'll do the same thing again. Main, Jenkins file. We'll click on Save and click on Build Now. And once the job completes, what we can see here is that we are cloning the repository based on SSH does all the steps as we expect, and then we see Hello World. Which credential type should you pick when integrating with Git? The answer is, it depends. For the examples that we had in this video, either will work fine. However, if instead of using a pipeline job, you're using multi-branch or using an organization type job, then the only real option will be to use username and password type credentials. Why is that? If you think about it for a moment, what's happening is there are plugins that are integrating with your SCM providers. And most of the time, those plugins are doing more than just doing a Git clone or a Git fetch. They're actually making API calls to those providers. And since API calls will not support SSH private key type credentials and really only username password or token based, then that's why you have to select a username, password, type credential in Jenkins. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.